Now here we are in episode 5 and we visit the Ray Kurzweil chart again. And in this episode, we are going to focus on this zone over here. So after the extinction of the dinosaurs, all the way up to recorded human civilization, what happened in between? This is a huge portion of the chart and I spoke a little bit about this in episode 4. But so much happened that we have to examine this in more detail before we can go into the closer parts of the chart to the present. So we're working our way to the present very methodically. It's also worthwhile to revisit the cosmic calendar because we're well into December 31st now. Out of the entire year, we are well into December 31st. At dawn, apes and monkeys split. 8 p.m., humans and chimpanzees split. And then progressing along, 10.30, human brain size begins tripling and 11.52, modern humans evolve. So let's see what happened in between because these seem like very big jumps in a short time. Over to Wikipedia, you see primate amorpha. That is the supergroup that we belong to, and primates are part of that. This group emerged almost entirely after that Cretaceous Paleogene extinction event 66 million years ago. The adaptive radiation as a result of that is what caused such a rapid acceleration and diversification of life, including into primates. The first branch to split off does not look much like humans at all, prosimians, then monkeys, then lesser apes, great apes, and humans, and each one closer and closer. So you can see that the earlier it split off, obviously the more distantly related it is to humans, and the ones that split off the closest are more closely related. So we'll zero in on this zone over here now. Because of that Eocene-Oligocene extinction event 33 to 34 million years ago, there was adaptive radiation that caused further acceleration in evolution in a lot of different animals, but even in monkeys versus apes. So monkeys, like baboons, split off, and now you have apes. These are the five types of apes that exist today. And the similarities in their skeletons you can see, but all four other than humans are more similar to each other than any are similar to humans, including the chimpanzee, the one most closely related. They all have much longer arms and more powerful jaws and a smaller brain case. Humans are substantially different. So as we see, these are the time frames where each split occurred. Gibbons approximately 20 million years ago. Orangutans 15 million years ago, gorillas 8.8 .8 million years ago, and chimpanzees 6.3 million years ago. And that brings us to a chart that we saw last time, which is this one. Because this is where chimpanzees split away from humans, and chimpanzees stayed at about the same brain size, while these proto-humans continued to evolve, and like we saw in that cosmic calendar, human brain size began to triple over here, and over this process it tripled. This is huge. This is what is called a sentience singularity because life on Earth achieved sentience, an intelligent species. I speak about that in great detail in this video up here in the upper right hand corner. I describe this as a sentience singularity, a singularity that occurred in the past and somewhat analogous to ones we will experience in the future in different sense. A technological singularity in the future, but this was a sentience singularity because suddenly these proto-humans and eventually modern humans became so much more intelligent while every other type of animal was effectively left where they were. They were left behind. We went from worrying about tigers and lions eating us to worrying about whether we are making them extinct. That is how far we have advanced technologically. And this human evolution had a lot of adaptive radiation trigger points to accelerate it, such as ice ages and things like that. And while this chart may give you some impact, you get even more of seeing how much evolution occurred in a short time by seeing this time-elapse video of the faces of all the steps in between. As you can see, we went from a very ape-like face to the face of a modern human, but most of the change happened in the very final fraction of the video, which is exactly what you should expect to see based on this exponential curve and how this tripling seemed very sudden in a linear sense, but in an exponential sense, it was not. Back to Wikipedia over here, you can see more timestamps, the same data, but with all the branches that went extinct alongside it to see how many of these just went away. And thus the only type of human that still exists today is Homo sapiens, that is us. Every other type went extinct for one reason or another. These very closely related types perhaps interbred with humans as well, and some humans today have some distant ancestry of Neanderthals 
and Denisova people. This chart gives us another idea because it has an axis of geography, Eurasia versus Africa. Homo erectus was one of the intermediate stages that we saw, and then all those other stages that we saw, some went extinct, and the ones closest to us arguably interbred with us, but then we, Homo sapiens, were advanced enough that we could spread out of Africa and take over all of Eurasia in terms of human civilization, and therefore we crowded out every other type of human because we spread out of Africa. And this only occurred within the last 100,000 years to 10,000 years based on what corner of the globe we spread to. So I hope this chart makes sense, but to look at this spread in a more granular sense, remember this is 400,000 years ago, 0 0.4 million. 0 0.2 million would be 200,000 years ago, which is over here. So to look at this spread in a more granular sense, see this chart over here. We evolved in Eastern Africa, spread to West Africa, crossed into the Middle East in 100,000 BC, India, East Asia, Siberia, Europe, Australia, and the Americas over the land bridge that was the Bering Strait. Humans did not get to New Zealand until 1300 AD, but those are small quirks of history that are not an important part of the picture when looking at the whole world. Humans did not get to Madagascar until 500 AD, and this was the spread of humans. But this was all before the beginning of civilization. All of this was still in what is called the Stone Age, not the Bronze Age. The earliest Bronze Age cultures began about 3000 BC, so 5000 years ago, and still only in a couple pockets of the world. And civilization was not a certainty then because there was also a Bronze Age collapse in many parts of the world, such as in Greece and West Asia. And only at the time of the Iron Age, so about 1200 BC, was the trend line steep enough that we can say civilization was not going to be reversed because the Bronze Age collapse, the transition point from the Bronze Age to the Iron Age, was itself about 700 years. Today, when there is an economic boom and a recession, that's maybe two years of weakness that we see. That was 700 years because of the accelerating rate of change still being in a relatively flat part of the curve, not a steep part of the gradient. So that is what we'll talk about next time.